In this topic, we're going to discuss the cardiac cycle. So by the end of this topic, you should be able to describe the three phases in the cardiac cycle, atrial systole, ventricular systole, diastole, and then describe how the valves control blood flow in the heart. The heart undergoes a sequence of events that is repeated in humans around 70 times each minute when at rest. This is known as the cardiac cycle. And you've got two components to the beating of a heart. Diastole, which is relaxation, and systole, which is contraction. Systole occurs separately in the ventricles and atria, so it's described as two phases. But diastole does take place simultaneously in all the chambers of the heart, so it's treated as a single phase. So a quick overview of what's going on. Have a look at atrial systole first. Think systole is to squeeze. So the atria are squeezing the blood out into the ventricles. So in scientific terms, they are contracting. The ventricles are relaxed here. I want you to have a look at what's going on in the valves as well. Then in ventricular systole, the ventricles are contracting and pushing the blood out into the arteries. And finally, ventricular diastole is when both the atria and ventricles are relaxed. So think diastole, dilated, so they're filling up with blood. Okay, let's go into it in a little bit more detail. Let's start with atrial systole. This is contraction of the atria. The cardiac muscle of the atria contracts forcing the blood that they contain into the ventricles. The blood has only been pushed a short distance, so the atria are very thin. During this stage, the cardiac muscle of the ventricular walls remains relaxed. Have a look at the different valves. Can you see that the atrioventricular valves are open and the semilunar valves are closed? Something else that's interesting to note is the sphincter muscles in the vena cava and pulmonary vein contract to prevent backflow. Okay, ventricular systole. So after a short delay, the ventricles contract simultaneously. This increases the blood pressure within them, forcing shut the atrioventricular valves and preventing the backflow of blood into the atria. So in this phase, the atria are relaxed, the atrioventricular valves are closed, and the semilunar valves are open. So that lub sound when you hear the heartbeat is the valves closing. The semilunar valves are then forced open, pushing blood into the artery and aorta, the pulmonary artery. The muscles in the ventricular walls are thick as they have to pump the blood further than the atria. Interestingly, any additional resistance to blood flow, such as narrowing of the aorta, will lead to an increased thickening of the left ventricle. Okay, the last phase, diastole. This is when the cardiac muscles, the ventricles and atria are relaxed. As the atria fill, the pressure in them rises, pushing open the atrioventricular valves and allowing the blood to pass into the ventricles. Since the pressure in the ventricles is lower than the arteries, the semilunar valves in the aorta and pulmonary artery will shut. This is that dub sound when you hear your heart beat. OK, 
Okay, finally, the valves and the control of blood flow. So valves in the cardiovascular system prevent the backflow of blood. They ensure that blood flows in one direction by opening when the pressure difference on either side of them favors the flow of blood in the correct direction. So when pressure differences are reversed, such as if the blood starts to flow backwards, the valves are designed to close. So have a look at the atrioventricular valve at the top of this diagram. So you find this valve between the atria and the ventricles. So they open when the atria contract during atrial systole and they close when the ventricles contract. This ensures that when the ventricles contract, blood within them moves into the aorta and the pulmonary arteries rather than back into the atria. Can you remember where you find the semilunar valves? Well, these are found in the aorta and the pulmonary arteries, and these prevent the backflow of the blood into the ventricles when the recoil action of the elastic walls of these vessels creates a greater pressure in the vessels than in the ventricles. And that concludes our lesson. The end.